Hello and most welcome to 1014. I will continue to talk a little bit about the tremendous big book about the changing consciousness in the West by Richard E. Lind. And according to him there was an unhealthy change going on in the late uh, pre-Socratic time or pre-pre-Socratic time so to speak late 18th 19th century before Christ where there was a huge disabandoning of tradition and initiation rites rites and traditions that could have helped the growing adolescent uh, overcome <clears throat> the event of consciousness that usually comes uh, in pre-adolescence and early adolescence and if not supervised will inevitably lead to a division between two sides and thereby usually almost the case the body is deemed to be the unconscious childlike behavior uh, that is abandoned when the child goes into puberty and there had being this new thing the clear thinking and the ability to be aware of one's own thinking this is the new thing and I would like to refer to this as human awareness to sort of discern it from animal discerners which is in some ways rather this different one could call the initial state uh, in the child a complete innocence but also of being completely unconscious of its own reactions its own thought patterns a child in pre-puberty just reacts there is no observance of the reactions neither is there any thinking about thinking or thinking about reactions and the child literally cannot know which way it should straddle what situations make makes the kid happy or what situations make it unhappy where it does want to go and where it shouldn't go all those things is aching to clarity in thinking having an extra level of thinking thinking about thinking and thinking about situations all those things are not present early on in childhood but they get become progressively present when adolescence hits and it used to be the case which is still the case in all cultures of the world that there is a help there a tradition built up where there is guidance from adults helping with the initiations rites and also a very clear understanding that the psyche of the child is completely different from the adult and also that the growing consciousness in the adolescent is radically different rather than growing psych, uh, from the already mature psyche of the adult. All those three things and more are incredibly important. And uh, I would later argue that this is a forgotten fact because of the idea of the world out there. We don't see consciousness as being possible or being different. I do remember this change very clearly 
all of a sudden I could reflect on my own thinking and that came about really quick the first time I felt it. And I had a feeling formerly I just reacted and I didn't see my own thinking because I was identical to my thinking. And this awareness also brought a closeness to things around me. I could now approach them and that feeling I did not have before. It was more like too involved to have a closeness, so to speak. It's very hard to make something an object of attraction if you can't discern it from yourself. How can you long for something that is yourself? Well, I'd say you cannot. And that was a rather incredible development. And it makes life, made life much more valuable, interesting and uh, profounder somehow. I wouldn't say spiritual, but it was going in that direction, the first step in the direction of spiritual. This is given a rather mechanical name within technical psychology. It's called emotional regulation with a very coarse word obviously taken from technology. Regulation is how we regulate, for instance, the steam engine of Sir Watt. The specific system, the double system with a vacuum chamber and a cylinder filled with vapor. That is a new system and it could call, be called the regulation of the steam. This is obviously borrowed directly from technology and do look out for those borrowings because they always depict that something is awry. That's that simple wanting to just copy something that we know works and to sort of put it in, in the area where we have no idea and we think somehow magically we can gain knowledge by using this instrument. Uh, reminds me of the poor Maya Indians who took the shooting sticks of the conquistadors in the early 16th century and sort of pointed it to the conquistador but in the wrong way with the barrel towards themselves and the butt towards the Spaniards. It is having no knowledge of something and thereby you feel free to use it whatever like way you do like the freedom can only be given by ignorance and there is no freedom in reality to do whatever you like but it is this period early adolescent 12 13 14 where you begin to control your emotions or rather you can watch them and you could see which ways you could walk which is easier and what ways that would have been tougher and this is rather similar for in everyday life how you avoid those situations that gives you displeasure or becomes difficult and you stride towards those instances in your life that are easier or better for you and this will develop simultaneously or parallel with the awareness getting sharper and better it will be a much more informed awareness as time passes but just the idea of awareness I just thought it was absolutely amazing this to understand what awareness is I gave a rather down-to-earth definition the last time I, I just want to repeat because it was so good it was coming from Jeremy Schwartz and is the mice that learned during trial and error from the past the only area where you can learn something is the past and these mice could handle the maze quite fantastically 
and then an incision was made into the prefrontal cortex. And that means that putting things together doesn't work anymore. It doesn't take away the memory, the knowledge of the maze. But even though the mouse knows perfectly well in the beginning of the maze how to do, when that thought is ended and it went, maybe the first 10 steps, my step, mouse step, when next thought was supposed to come, the mouse cannot know because of the lack of a free prefrontal cortex where in the thinking process it left off and thereby it doesn't know which next piece of knowledge to take and this is how it working this is the <coughs> working manner of the prefrontal cortex we mentioned that earlier uh, like 300 lectures ago how important the prefrontal cortex is and how it was ignored for a long time but that is what awareness is to know where you left off because we have thoughts that follow each other like a bead but they don't follow automatically we need to know where one thought ends and where and when and this is a obvious parallel to the maze for the map to work, the knowledge to know, work, you need to know where in the maze you are. And that is a location in time and space. And that is awareness. It's not the knowledge, it's to know where you are in knowledge. Which is a completely different thing, many expects. I can well imagine that this prefrontal cortex lobotomized mice could have some of their neural fluid extracted with a syringe and put into another mouse brain. And that mouse brain wouldn't have the prefrontal cortex removed and therefore it could find the way in the mice. I don't know if it works that way but it shouldn't surprise me. Self-awareness doesn't even play a role in our close cousins, the chimpanzee. They do change completely during adolescence, puberty, body-wise, mentally, uh, hormonal, sexually and so forth. But there is no change in awareness. They don't become self-aware. They become more developed, stronger and so forth. But there is no development with self-awareness and I think there is a very close connection to the use of hand I will not digress into that now but since chimpanzees don't use the hand and all our more abstract things are coming from our upright upright position that gives a possibility to think in 360 degrees plus than more uh, that is not possible for a chimp and as I showed before, Barbara Twersky has demonstrated that taking things out of their context, decontextualization and recontextualization is something you do with your hands. You cannot do it with your brain to start with. Once it's done with the hands, you can do it in your hand, head. But that needs to be firmly established with the hands. And that's why training of the hands is so utterly important in most cultures. However, not, not any longer in the Western culture. So there's two things that we have abandoned. This is the tradition, the guidance in the initiation, initiation rites, and a sort of taking away of knowledge as such, seeming seeing it as a foreign particle, having a sort of autoimmune reaction to the things that helps you, that is knowledge, attacking it and getting rid of it.
what happened according to Richard E. Lind with initiation rates that obviously they were deemed useless somehow because there was no understanding of what awareness could be. Everything for the Greek or the pre-Socratic is out there somehow in a very radical way. It's just out there. The inside doesn't matter and therefore they didn't dwell on the inside. It became unimportant and therefore the guess of what the inside was or what awareness was was completely wrong. For the Greek awareness became being explicate about the outer world and then that was turned into being explicate of your inner self. But that makes the problem even greater because it is this change where you get an implicit implicity and an explicity in the adolescence. You get a clear understanding that all of a sudden you can become explicit somehow. But that oddly enough also infers implicitly, implicit, implicit knowledge. And all of a sudden the explicit, the clear thinking, the rationale, the abstraction becomes thing of the head whereas the implicit, the not clear, the not verbalizable becomes the body and there the problem starts. We know from earlier the body is not non-verbal, it's not the least abstract, it can become and it is extremely abstract. All complicated abstracts words come from the use of the body, height, that metaphorically become quantity which can be used in mathematics and bring more and more complexity to thinking. That is starting in the body. By making thinking aware the same as being explicate at Big, very big problem starts. All of a sudden consciousness is only what can be explained, explainable or a like a long word list, string of words and that is absolutely wrong. Awareness is not that. This is not how we remember awareness. Yes, it could be developed into words but awareness as such were never ever words. There was another thing looking at the words, yes, but it was not the words themselves. And the Greek, of course, introduced some sort of blindness or a big blind spot, almost like a whole eye away, by making this really odd equation between being aware and that something is verbalizable, being a word in nature. All of reality for Socrates were explainable, explicit. Nothing was implicit. Yes, the explicit was hidden, but in his sense it was not hidden in that fashion that it wasn't more, that it was a potentiality. No, it was already made. It was n clearly developed to what it was supposed to be already made. It didn't have to go through any potentialities. It was already out there in its perfection. That's a grand mistake. And since antiquity there was no light shed into consciousness because we already sort of cast away consciousness by the very definitions we, we made. And then what does the child do when it hits per puberty? It makes a division. That division is illicit. It's harmful even for the child because it's not for true. One could say this is going to be completely happenstantial. Well, the thing is, since the body is in some ways more unconscious, 
and it seems that the head is actually controlling the body, although Benjamin Libet showed that that is not true. It's obvious that the child wants to fall into the trap of making a divisional cut in the wrong way. And if the concept's body and mind were to be made clear before, it could have made some sense, but there is no clear div division. There is no natural point of making a cut. And therein lies the big problem. Not that there is a cut made, but it was made in a really weird way. So we reduced awareness to something that we couldn't understand and that awareness come to have later on ideas of lightness, clarity, like a mountain stream and so forth and so forth always in the head, nowhere else, always showing the way, being the master of everything, always distant and distancing himself always from its objects. This self owns the objects, but it also only owns the shadow of the objects, nothing substantial because you're no longer in the body, you're no longer close to anything. So you need to be distant and wanting to be close at the same time. And that can only be achieved that you first recognize things are actually completely independent of yourself. And then a natural longing could be. But in the case of the Greek, they never clearly cut off or showed that there is a difference between what is here without making an illicit division between body and mind which starts the whole process and things are really out there they confound them so they cannot longer tell what is subjective in the whole equation or, or the whole porridge or soup and they can't tell what's objective and that makes for a bad localization program now we don't have a space where the calculations are made and that information is needed. All of a sudden a randomness enter into the equation and it's very hard to build anything on this because it's like having medicine bottles uh, but they don't have any etiquettes. You can only know the size because you can see that but you don't, don't know what they contain. How are you supposed to mix? How are you supposed to make recommendations? It will be very hard. And this is also the casting away of knowledge itself. And that started early on. It surprised me. All this getting rid of initiation rites, tradition, started so early on. Long before the year zero. Because they were deemed useless. One could no longer see a point in dwelling about consciousness. And those thought strands never developed firmly, never became anything of real, never gained a tradition. And since we stopped looking in that way and said that consciousness equals what you can explain only, whereas a guided initiation rites and savvy people around you, cunning people, wise people, adults, could show you the way that you can have both. You don't make the division where you uh, still immature want to do it. I think that's the immaturity of the child that still goes around, makes for a really bad decision and this decision needs to be informed. That can only come from the surrounding area. All the people who already uh, sort of uh, struck a balance between the unconscious and the conscious without making harsh divisions somewhere in nowhere which causes the whole problem to erupt from the beginning. And we grew up without initiation rights, without guidance from wiser people, 
without tradition and on top of that every adult we meet upon have made the same illicit division and therefore they are themselves in a harmful state and although you can't copy a harmful state exactly this harmful state is bound to disrupt you bound to affect you in a bad way and then you will make the di uh, division even more so the division is not so much an incision or something put on paper or a drawing where you slash something in the middle the division is just an effect of not knowing anything better which is made worse it's going by the feeling and uh, it's an uninformed way of doing things because knowledge is simply not there it should be there it should be support it should be helped because you are really weak this period you are a weak person and your whole emotional life is turned upside down and especially in modern days where people are that shut off so they don't see the difference in consciousness between the young ones and the middle the adolescents they treat everyone like the world is out there and explain in an adult fashion which is absolutely horrid I cannot understand it and by the adult using rules the younger person cannot understand that further develops the situation into a, a sort of a hole and of course if you maltreated you will develop this HDHD autism and so forth and still you don't have to be maltreated in any obvious way it's enough that the person who guides you are not in good shape that's more than enough it's a rather dreadful development to put consciousness the most precious we have in the head because it loses its freshness Let me read this from Gregory of Nicaea or Nicaea. How he achieved a godlike illuminated mind. Quote, when by zeal for a good life you wash away the filth stuck to your heart, then godly beauty will once more shine forth in you, just as black and iron when the grinding stone strips it of rust begin to shine and glitter reflecting the rays of the sun so too with our inner man whom the Lord calls our heart when a man has cleansed off the rusty dirt formed on the pupil of his eye from the impurities of the evil one he once more takes on his original image and becomes becomes blessed and of quote Illumination, however, was not a final and permanent achievement, but required continued vigilance to prevent the return of darkness. Even after disciplines like sobriety, prayer of the heart, had emptied the mind of sensory imagings, and the deity had, deity had illuminated the newly emptied space in the chest the supplicant had to continue to guard it against sin another quote here and when the air of the heart is pure there is nothing to prevent the divine light of Jesus shining into it as long as we are not puffed up by pride vanity conceit and a boastful showing off we do not strive towards the unattainable and are not therefore deprived of Christ's help for Christ being the image of humility hates all those things and here is a specificity also coming from Saint Gregory or Nikea quote if however in spite of all your efforts 
You do not succeed in entering into the realm of the heart, as I have described. Do what I shall now tell you, and with God, God's help, you will find what you seek. You know that in every man, inner talking is in the breast. For when our lips are silent, it is in the breast that we talk and discourse with ourselves. Pray and sing psalms and do other things. Thus, having banished every thought from his in, this inner talking, give it the following short prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, and force it instead of all other thought to have only this one constant cry within. If you continue to do this constantly with your whole attention, then in time this will open for you the way to the heart which I have described. There can be no doubt about this, for we have proved it ourselves by our experience. Unquote. An inner talking experience in the breast or heart does not sound familiar to modern ears, but apparently a common, more or less normal experience at least among these orthodox monks. This is a more recent instance of early examples of talking to one's heart soul, but in these earlier examples the heart was already awakened. It was the worldly thoughts of the heart associated with this inner talking that obstructed this transformation all the way to entering into the realm, realm of the heart. That is its awakening and it was the repeated mantra prayer that cleansed the heart of thoughts and thereby opened the door to the inner sanctum of the heart. Very really like the mantra, the repetition, needs to be complicated and I would, I would sort of uh, make a parallel myself and I would call it the strange attractor, that repetitive, strenuous devotion to something that you keep on and keep on, that does something within yourself, which is something that was belied by Western thinking. You cannot do something within yourself. But then you will notice you have an inner life and you can send signals to that. You can affect it. And I think the third stage, this is where real work is done. Not on the outside, but on the inside. And you see, you can put in effort, you can really put some use to your thinking. And that will be a strain, but it will give you a lot of rewards, incredible rewards. Because living without awareness, it is not like living at all. It's like we could sink lower than the animals and we can also rise much higher than them. Having no awareness, of course is sinking below the animals. At least they have instincts that is pure. We don't have anything if we sink lower. We're going to be ruled in some weird way by the flesh, but not instinctual, but in a horrible coarse way. Whereas awareness shines into everything. And when I got awareness the first time, I will never forget that. It was opening a door to a new world where everything was much more interesting, more enticing. And I think all children should be allowed to go there and not meddle to become something they were born to be, children, and stay children for the rest of their life. That's a horrible fate when all this glory is around the corner. But only adults who are themselves not illuminated, as this apostle could possibly have said, will lead the children into an in unilluminated state where there is no awareness and therefore there is no higher form, enjoyment or satisfaction. Because there can be no satisfaction if you are completely the same with the thing needs to be an understanding. An understanding is seeing it as different from yourself. And this is the main problem 
with the metaphysics of presence. The lack of understanding what subjectivity, subjectivity does means that the objects are a mixture of subjectivity and objectivity. Those needs to be divided afterwards somehow. Otherwise, everything becomes muddled, nothing is clear, and your personal wishes becomes intermingled what is absolutely pure from subjectivity or doesn't have subjectivity. An important lesson for Richard Eileen once more. I say thank you very much and I wish you a very pleasant afternoon. Bye bye for now.